Let's podcast. I'm Joe Giglio, joined today by Scott Wood. Joe Ovius has the temerity to take a vacation, sir. Do you think you are part owner of the OG Media Company or something? We will try to strive to move on without Joe Ovius today, without our captain. As I always say, though, anybody can podcast on a Monday, and anybody can sh- certainly podcast on a Monday after the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. So, Scott, let's get right into it. And thanks to our friends at Copiers Plus, you don't know what you don't know. So save yourself and your company some some money by your print management and your information management. Reach out. It's copiers-plus.com. And, of course, uh, I'm watching the end of the NC State-Oakland game, and at the end of regulation, I see George Hatem cheering on the NC State Wolfpack. Can't do this without uh, Greg Hatem and the Hatem family. So we are here at Efort Studios, downtown Raleigh, Empire Properties. Best of luck and travels to Greg and George as they move on to Dallas with the Wolfpack. The ACC is moving on in this NCAA tournament, Scott. Four teams, a full one quarter of the Sweet 16 is comprised of ACC teams. We have the three th- the three teams here in the triangle, Carolina, Duke, NC State, and then Clemson has decided to join the party with a pair of wins with by beating New Mexico, a darling from the Mountain West, and Baylor, a darling from the Big 12. So let's start with not, oh my God, the ACC is so good. Oh my God, I can't believe everybody got it wrong. But let's start with who is to blame for the ACC's current situation. Who should we be mad at? And who should we not be mad at? I'm going to go first. Okay. I'm going to start with who we should not be mad at. Okay. Let's not be mad at the selection committee for the NCAA tournament. In my best obvious voice. But Joe, Pitt should have been in. Wake Forest should have been in. All the Syracuse should have been in. No, the selection committee is not picking teams based on what they think is going to happen. Same thing applies for the Big East. They're not picking teams based on what they think is going to happen. It's not a predictive tool. This is the equivalent, Scott, of you being the the great student that you were at Marion High. You being the great student that you were at NC State. Let's just say, let's just say you you had a history class that you were in love with. Okay. What was your major anyway? Uh started in civil engineering. Uh realized I wasn't civil very civil engineering. That's just where My I started. My goodness, sir. You gotta start high. <laughs> uh and realize that studios run through practice. So we pivoted to sports management. Sports management. Okay. Let's just say that freshman year you had an unbelievable civil engineering class that you enjoyed tremendously. Let's just say you you had a B on your homework assignments. Let's just say then you had a B in your classwork. You, know, you impressed your teacher. You were there. Your attendance was great. You did. You kept notes. Then let's say you took the midterm and you got a B, right? Now you got all of this criteria. You have a bunch of Bs. And now all of a sudden you get to the final test and you tell the teacher, well, no, I, I'm going to get an A. Well, based on what? I can't predict that you're going to get an A. I know what you've done. What you've done is you've turned in three Bs. So as the teacher, I would say your grade is a B. Now, heck, you might study your ass off. You might write the greatest paper in the history of the world. You might come up with ingress and egress for PNC Arena and fix some students. That's civil engineering, right? Sure. Kind of, sort of. You might fix some traffic problems in downtown Raleigh and parking. But how am I supposed to know that based on what you've already done? So you want to get mad at people? We're going to get to the people who you should be mad at. But don't get mad at the selection committee. They're not out here trying to predict what's going to happen. They're trying to put teams into the field based on your body of work. I would agree. I would also say, would you say NC State's resume was a B when they came in? Right. I mean, it was actually the resume before the ACC tournament I th- was like a C minus. Exactly. But I'm just saying, I think that 
the the teams they did select they got right. Now it's very easy to say. Agree. Okay, I if, agree if, with that. If, if Pitt got in or Wake got in, could they win a game? Most definitely. I think they're a good enough team. But I think to your point that what you showed leading up to it outside of winning the tournament, which is anomaly for NC State. It's an automatic bid where you're taking the selection out process out of their hands. I think it's very easy to go back and say, oh, yeah, they could have they could have done better than what Virginia did in the tournament. They could have done better than so and so. It's very easy to say that because all there's a lot of teams, especially in that grouping, maybe 10 teams that are capable of beating the top teams. But again, there's only a certain amount that's going to get in. But I think they got the ones right in the ACC that was picked. Yeah. I, I'm, again, these are the people we're not going to be mad at. And I'll just say now that the second one, because my list is not very long of who not to be mad at, sir. <laughs> we will be spending time on who to be mad at. But my list of teams not to be, the list of items, entities, and people not to be mad at, don't be mad at NC State, man. <laughs> don't be mad at NC State. They got here. They're a surprise playing with a chip on their shoulder. They're now headed to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2015. You were in the Sweet 16 in 2012. Just just real quick, the difference between playing in the Sweet 16 and that week off and the adulation that you received than even those first two rounds. It's, it's very similar to the first two rounds. I think it starts to hit you. You don't really start to think, okay, Final Four, National Championship. And then when you get to that stage at the Sweet 16, it's like, Holy crap, all we got to do is win two games, and all of a sudden you're one of the final <laughs> four teams. So I think right now it starts to hit them, but I do think the nice part is, to you know, you had ACC tournament run. You had the quick turnaround here. This is almost like a breather. You know, practices are pretty light. It's a lot of skill work, scouting, those type of things, but it's definitely on your mind. It's like, guys, we win two games all of a sudden we're talking about final four so i do think now in the mind it started to process like we're close enough to this finish line where if we stay hot and win a couple games you know final four national championship can become a real factor teams entities people items not to be mad at duke i have been loud i have been clear that this is a down year for duke i have been loud i have been clear next year is duke's year well, think about that basement for a second. What a nice basement to have in a down year. <laughs> think about it. NC State's going to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2015. Also the last time Duke won the national title. And here we are with Duke talking, about oh, it's a down year. Man, there's something wrong with Duke. They're not that good. And here they are in the Sweet 16. Uh, shouts to my friend Dave for reminding me of this. One of Mike Krzyzewski's greatest, most succinct points that he ever made was about the concept of game pressure. When you're at Duke and you play on the road on a Tuesday night, you face game pressure. Every time you go out on the floor, you're getting someone else's best shot. Every time you go out on the floor, you're trying to uphold a standard that is Duke basketball, which is how we judge these teams, which is why I have been. I don't, I don't think I've been wrong about Duke. We'll see. Now, if they end up in, in Arizona at the Final Four, then I was wrong about Duke. But they have a standard, and they understand the concept of game pressure. Do you know who didn't understand the concept of game pressure? Do you know who the lights were a little too bright for? Holy smokes, James Madison. <laughs> Holy smokes. When I'm wrong, I, I when I'm wrong, Scott, I enjoy being just dead wrong. Like, I can't stand, like, if JMU had lost at the buzzer, I would still be here today being like, yeah, but, but, but. No, there's no buts about what Duke did to JMU yesterday. Jared McCain we're hitting three, six three-pointers in the first half and then setting a Duke record for three-pointers in an NCAA tournament game. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, I was right about who the bus driver of that team is, and I identified this probably before or at the same time as John Shire did, that it is McCain. It's not Filipowski. It's not anybody else. It's McCain. So Duke comes and goes with McCain. But again, you want to be mad at people? Or entities, items, schools, coaches, Duke, not on the list. You have anyone to add to does, the not mad McCain list? Does McCain have a rule of four? Have you looked into this? I have to. I know when he gets molten hot, as he did down at Florida State, yeah. which you did, uh, he's pretty good. He's I, pretty good. I bet there's a rule of four on there. I bet if you look at, took a deep dive. If, I, I if you give me successful. a homework assignment, you know I will complete it. Um, do you have anything to add to the list of people, items, entities, schools, coaches to be not? mad at obviously Carolina took care of business they were in Charlotte 
We'll get to the Tar Heels. Uh, the big dog, Ross Barton, will join us here in a little bit on the podcast. But now let's get to the people who you should be mad at. Let's get to it. And you know the first answer. Your your first answer is going to be national media. I think it's all tied together, though. Like, for me... I would, in what sense? I in would, what sense? <clears throat> well, first of all, let's define national media, right? Because it's 2024. What, what does that actually mean? I think these are people who actually... These are people who try to cover college basketball from a national perspective. Ovius and Gilio, the podcast, is like a super niche. It just so happens our niche is really fucking good at college basketball, though. Uh, see results. Uh, see who's left in this tournament, okay? There's also a reason our niche works. Thank you. But we do not make any attempt to cover college basketball from a national perspective. We're not out here trying to figure out we, we have Patrick Stevens on to talk about the bracket. We have other people on who, who come in and try to add perspective from outside of our triangle. But we are in our bubble, and we try to explain our bubble the best way that we can. So you have people like Jeff Goodman, who you've done podcast work for. You have John Rothstein. You have Mike DeCourcy, um, Ross Dellinger over at Yahoo, Pete Tamil over at ESPN. You know, they're, they're, first of all, there's not that many if you think about it, who actually trot Mike DeCourcy at the Sporting News. There's not that <laughs> problematic for ESPN, Joe Lenardi, who, by the way, should just do his fucking job and project the bracket instead of instead of adding his opinion to everything. <laughs> like, just if you want to be the opinion guy, be a Come on, start your own podcast. Come on down, man. Sell your own ads. Do what we're doing. But if you're going to sit up at ESPN and pick the bracket, then pick the fucking bracket, dude. Okay? It ain't that hard. <laughs> Now, national coverage. So this idea, because let's get into it, because I, the ACC doesn't have, and this is going to tie into the second person I want to be mad at. But you 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 were saying that Nash, when you talk about national coverage, it ties into. I think for me, who I would be mad at would be the Big Ten and the SEC. That's okay. where all the coverage is going. Right. So the national media is automatically going there, and they're saying, oh, the ACC has to to make changes. They Carolina, NC State, Duke, and Florida State, they all got to get out of there. They got to go somewhere. They're falling apart. And I think the problem is they're just looking at it. And again, is the ACC falling apart? Yes, slowly. But there's still really good basketball. This is a basketball conference. Has been for a long time. And the funny thing is I kind of sit here and I think about it. Each and every year we do this and we're like, Oh, the, the SEC got X amount of teams in the, the Big Ten. They, they must be powerhouse conferences. And then you sit there and look at it, and it's like, oh, Miami's in the Final Four. Oh, so-and-so's in the Final Four. Syracuse. So, so every single year, the ACC gets a limited amount of teams compared to the two mega conferences, but then outperform them in every single way. The Big Ten hasn't won a national championship since 2000. I know. Zach Randolph. <laughs> Was in school when they won the last national championship for the Big Ten. So don't sit here and tell me that they're a powerhouse, especially in, if we're talking about football. Okay, yeah, I mean, they've got some really good teams in football. But not basketball, they're not a powerhouse. So the problem for the ACC is this becomes a season-long narrative. So let's go back to uh, John Rothstein. This was after the Clemson game at Cameron Indoor, and they had lost. There were some officiating issues. And so from January 27th, John Rothstein... Uh, does some work for CBS and is what we would consider a national guy. And so his tweet from January 27th, another unintended consequence of today's ending between Duke and Clemson, question mark, the possibility of the ACC only getting two teams in the NCAA tournament selection Sunday just increased. This is January 27th. This is a grown ass man who knows better about the selection process than to suggest that the ACC was only going to get Duke and Carolina into the field on January 27th. <clears throat> like my question to you, and maybe, maybe this is what you're kind of getting at with the SEC and, and big 10. Who does it help that John Rothstein makes these proclamations on January? Like who is he helping? Is well, he helping himself? Is he, is he putting the ACC down to help himself? Is it, you you know you're dick riding for these other conferences and you think by doing that that's very you're going to appeal to the fans of those other conferences by putting down 
the ACC. Like, I just don't know what's accomplished by this tweet. And, and that very easily could be the motive. Like, look, let's just hype up these two conferences and we'll just turn it into two conferences. So we're just going to absolutely bash the rest of them. I saw Bobby Lutz, former coach. <laughs> he, he said something. To here him. it is right here. <laughs> he actually tweeted it yesterday. Remember when you tweeted this? Missed it by this much. <laughs> Four in the Sweet 16. As a former coach who watches teams play, I'm amazed by the analysis of the strength of various leagues by all experts. I look at teams and rank them by who I would not want to play. So yes, Bobby. And that's, I think... With some clear-headed... Bobby, who was working last stop I, was with Nebraska. Yep. You know, so, you know, this isn't Bobby, like, riding for NC State it, per se. This is him clear, clear, clear-eyed clear saying, hey... These are the teams who I wouldn't want to prepare for. And I think that's been my biggest issue. If, if you want to, you know, the NCAA, Rossine, Lenardi, if I'm going to sit there and break down game film of a team and truly find out who is good, those are the last two people I'm going to call. And I think sure. My, my, can, can people have an understanding without having played the game? Without a doubt. There's a lot of them. But it's also like everything that you're doing is a guess. So yeah, why are you for why, everyone though? And, and I don't understand why you would just sit there and just completely badmouth the ACC year after year after year. I, I hear it year after year, and then all of a sudden we get to the tournament and those teams perform. Uh, at some point, you have to learn. If we get if you get two teams in, I'd almost be willing to bet those two teams will be we'll in the Sweet 16. Yeah, well, uh, listen, you know me, I love it when I'm right, and I did this kind of as a lark on February 27th, the month after Rothstein, because I was inspired by. Josh Pastner, who was Mr. Positivity. So I had a little thread of positive, positive tweets about ACC teams. Lo and behold, from February 27th, so a month ago, Clemson is a Sweet 16 team. PJ Hall and Joe Girard are bucket getters and drought stoppers. The Tigers have four wins over Ken Palm top 50 teams out of the league, including a 2-0 mark against the SEC. Now, I also praised Wake Forest. I also pay, praised Pitt. I also praised Syracuse. But the fact of the matter is, this gets back to when you talk about the Big Ten. And, and Joe and I talked this about on Saturday on OG After Dark. The Big Ten has a distinct style of play. Yeah, It is plodding. It is slow. And there's, there's they're missing skill. You mentioned Zach Randolph. He's one of the few McDonald's All-Americans that Tom Izzo has ever had. It, it's not a... It's not, and he played in the NBA for like 20 years. <laughs> There's a direct correlation. Yes, he's had success in this tournament, but ultimately, why haven't they won the thing? Because they don't have the high end skill. We talked about the SEC on Saturday. Why does Auburn and Kentucky fail? Auburn, Auburn and Kentucky, they have high end lottery picks. Bruce Pearl under Auburn with Bruce Pearl has had lottery picks. Why do they fail? Well, they can't play in the half court. They can't get buckets when they need them. Yeah, that's part yeah. of it. So I'm sitting here in February telling you, Clemson has two guys who I can reasonably count on to get a basket when you need one. That gets back to Krzyzewski's concept of game pressure. Let's get to another tweet here over the weekend that rankled um, former a ACC athletic director, Debbie Yao. And I, th I think it rankled a, a number of people within the league because again, it gets back to who does this help? I don't understand. Well, this is Mike DeCourcy, Sporting News. This is after NC State beats Oakland. Okay. I'm here for all of the, quote, ACC Beater Horizon League team in overtime. Look how awesome we are, boasts, smiley face, emoji. I like Mike DeCourcy. I respect Mike DeCourcy. He's been in this game for a very long time. Mike DeCourcy will always be right about Mick Cronin. Man, that guy had a love affair for Mick Cronin, and he was right. Mick Cronin's an outstanding coach. That being said, you've completely missed the point. This is NC State wasn't even supposed to be here, sir. Second of all, that Horizon League team just took out Kentucky, who's going to have three lottery picks. So, I think they were pretty, and they all they by all rights they had the ball at the last possession of over in, in regulation, and probably could have could have and should have won that game. So why are we denigrating Oakland? And what? Who does it help, again, for you to put down an ACC team? I'm just asking. Mike DeCourcy does do work for the Big Ten Network, okay? 
Debbie Yao responds, I think we are most proud of winning seven games in 12 days, including wins against Carolina at Duke. You know, Debbie was going to get that in there. So again, I, I, when we talk about people to get mad at, and I'm not saying like go storm uh, the Bastille here. I'm just saying, who does it help for the people who try to cover college basketball nationally to put down the ACC? And how do you prevent that? I don't think you can prevent it because uh-huh. guess what they're getting? They're getting clicks. They're getting likes. They're getting, and they're getting, getting us recognition to talk all yeah. the time. See, the difference is I'm never going to hit that guy's follow button. I'm never going to, I'm never going to follow him. He's an idiot when it comes to college basketball. So why am I going to go sit there and see him say, Oh yeah. Uh, you know, the ACC sucks. Um, there's uh four teams in the sweet 16. That's pretty cool. You know, I mean, if you if you truly don't know basketball and you do not watch these teams, like that's why I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, and oh, I know why Purdue is going to lose next game. I haven't watched enough Purdue games right. to sit there and just absolutely throw slander as on I, their name or the Big Ten. As I like to say, you don't know what you don't know. So why why do we have to act like we know everything? Um, but I ask, how do you change that? You chart you change that with PR. And if it wasn't clear during the college football playoff selection, it, it should be crystallized now. Jim Phillips is not Jim Phillips has a PR problem. Jim Phillips is the commissioner of the ACC. Jim Phillips didn't create the ACC as it is right now as a 15 team league. We can criticize him when those other three teams get here, but he didn't create this 15 team league. Uh, he didn't make the long-term deal with ESPN. I'm not criticizing him for those things. Um, but I think it's fair to say at this point, Jim Phillips needs to be more of an active voice and and proponent for the ACC. You can do that in two ways. Like, I hate to be the one who, who tells you how the sausage is made. If Jim Phillips were to text John Rothstein and help him with a few things, guess what John, Roth, John Rothstein will be doing? Tweeting about how great the ACC is and what they're doing. It's, it's really that simple. When people say the media is biased, as someone who covered these teams, you know who, why to this day do I say nice things about Roy Williams and, and Bubba Cunningham? Why? Because they're nice to me. It's not that hard to figure out, right? <laughs> uh, Mark Godfrey's name is up on this wall. Why? He's nice to me. People were saying about Kevin Keats, oh, just two weeks ago, I get from Corey Smith over at Pac Pride. Oh, yeah, we had some people in our chat saying, oh, I'm not watching Scott and Joe because they just, they're not, they're not dealing with reality. Sir, we were the ones telling you what the reality was. Not that they were going to make this run, but what the reality was. So we have our biases for people who help us. Jim Phillips is not helping himself. He's not helping this league. That's part of his job. So no, I don't blame him for the current situation that the ACC is in. But yes, I do blame him for not being a more active proponent for his league. We were at the ACC tournament. We've now asked Jim, and this is not about necessarily why he won't talk to us. He doesn't talk to the News and Observer. He doesn't talk to David Teal. He, he, the Washington Post had to grab him kicking and screaming to talk for a story that they did about the ACC being in Washington, D.C. Obviously, these other guys aren't getting anything from him. Otherwise, they would pump up his tires. It's really that simple. I, I hate to be... Th- Adam Schefter at ESPN. Like I thought the game was laid bare with his tweet, with his emails with Gruden. I thought we were all aware of this now at this point. It's just exchange commerce journalism. That's all it is. That's all this guy needs to do. But he doesn't do it. I don't even remember him doing anything when he, he Florida didn't, State didn't get in. Right. But he did one thing during the ACC tournament with the ACC network. Guess what? That's not going to get it done. And again, this is, oh my God, Jim Phillips won't go on your podcast and you're mad. No, but do you know who covers the, to your point? Do you know who covers the league? We do. You know, what's good for you when you talk to people who don't necessarily agree with you and can challenge you and have honest conversations, you can make yourself look good when you do that. The news and observer, the Charlotte observer, David Teal and Richmond and the whole crew there, the, the people down at Clemson, who are now suing the league, the people of Florida state, you might disagree with them, but they cover the league. You, you have to engage with people. And Jim Phillips hasn't done that. Um, this segment is obviously very long. I just called it a segment. Shame on me. Radio deduction points for me. I got, I got two more people to be mad at though. 
You want to yeah. you hear them? Listen, I, I don't like the way Virginia plays basketball, but this isn't about the way that Virginia plays basketball. This is about Tony Bennett. You're now the only coach in the ACC that has a national championship on your resume. You have to be the new king of the league. You have to be, speaking of advocates, you have to be the new proponent of the league. He just steadfastly refuses to do it. Fine. Some people don't like PR. Some people don't like to, to you know, their own horn and do their own thing. That's fine. In this case, you, you, you need to be more active. Here's the real problem. The dude has won 69% of his ACC league games since 2021. 69%. Okay. Only Duke is better. That's it. His record in the NCAA tournament is 0-3. You can't go around kicking everyone's ass in the ACC and then get to March and fall flat on your face repeatedly. Can't do it. Can't have it. Tony Bennett, you got to be better. Last one. Mark Emmert, former president of the NCAA. There was a failure of leadership on the NCAA level to make people care about college basketball for more than three weeks in March. There was a failure at the NCAA level from Mark Emmert to have a, a vision of what college sports should be in the modern era with athletes as employees and, and contracted employees of the universities. The teams who are paying for that the most, believe it or not, are the ones who are having success in spite of it. Duke, number one. Carolina, number two. Kansas, number three. These are the brands who are affected by the best players in high school in the AAU circuit not playing college basketball. So that is what's kind of coming home to roost to me. Well, why, Joe, why, why does San Diego State, why does FAU... Why do some of these other schools, why are they having success? Well, well they're older. They're not fishing in the same ponds yeah. that the Blue Buds are. So they're the ones who are affected. They, I said Adam Silver from the NBA, NBA, NBA commissioner, and he's probably on the Duke Board of Trustees. I think he is. He's the one who needs to save college basketball, yeah. and he's trying. I mean, the NBA is the one trying to do more than than anything in, in, in college sports. But to me, Mark Emmer, th this falls squarely on him. And where this is in college sports right now. Well, he, I, I mean, what have they done? I, I feel like every decision they've made in the last three years has just absolutely turned it into a cluster. And I think everybody's watching the tournament, but during the regular season, there's so much discussed by a lot of people that have loved college basketball for so long. It's just hard to watch now. It's, it's completely changed. So he hasn't done anything. And I think to the point, I think the NBA has done a good job. They recognized, hey, we made a mistake adding the Ignite League where high school kids could come and play for that, that's gone now. So they've hands down done way more than the NCAA to try to turn this thing around to get it back to where it needs to be. Housekeeping. Whew. If you're anything like us and you've been on the road in March, or maybe you've just been out doing a live show, maybe you've just been doing your everyday things, you need some help around the house, you need some help cleaning, that's where Enovana comes in, Enovana.com. Listen, you, you, the people that we work with, I go by one test, and that's their website and how great it is. Look, look at Enovana.com. Do you think it gets any easier than that? It doesn't. Book cleaning now about Enovana. I mean, all of their services. This is a layup for you, and it's the best way to get your house clean and at a reasonable price, I might add. So, do yourself a favor, head over to Enovana.com and take care of the things that, you know, quite frankly, you might not have time for. And quite frankly, you want your house to be looking at its best at this time of the year in the spring. It's called spring cleaning for a reason. And speaking of housekeeping, I want to thank everyone, especially over Adam over at Longleaf Swine. We had a heck of a live show on Thursday what a great way to start our relationship with the Longleaf Swine. They have unbelievable food and drinks, uh, great bourbon selection as well. Thank, thanks to everyone for coming out. Uh, we had a great time uh, and we'll be back. We got two more live shows to do over the next two months. So you will see us there. And speaking of upcoming events, the OG birthday is coming up. May 3rd, Friday, we will be celebrating at Shady's in downtown Garner. We'll have some more information for you. But block it off. Save the date. May 3rd. It's a Friday. We will be at Shady's for the OG birthday party. And you might have seen a mug 
that we gave to Governor Roy Cooper. Well, we have a few of those for sale. If you're interested, you can reach out to us at the OG goes digital at gmail.com. We're moving on. I know somebody who's happy that Duke is moving on in the NCAA tournament. Matt Davis, State Farm and Garner, insuregarner.com. Give him a shout. Save some money. 919-779-8277. You don't have to be a Duke fan. You can be a State fan. You can be a Kentucky fan. Well, okay, maybe, maybe not Kentucky, but Matt takes all comers. He can always save you money. Best thing to do is have a conversation. So again, give him a call. It's 919-779-8277. Appreciate everyone who has reached out, even if you don't end up going with Matt. You, the people who have reached out have said to them, hey, we heard about you on the OG. We want to we want to have a conversation. We want to save money. In most cases, that has been what is exactly has happened with Matt Davis. So do yourself a favor. Car, home, life, pet, you name it. Matt's got it covered. So give him a call, 919-779-8277 and figure out a way that you can save some money with Matt Davis. It's insuregarner.com. Take it from somebody who thinks they know everything about everything. You don't. Here's what you don't know about selling your home. You can get a whole lot more if you trust the experts. That's hometown realty. Go to myhtr.com myhdr.com. You can buy, sell, calculate there. Even more important, you're going to maximize the value that you can get on your home sale. Hometown Realty has six locations between here and the coast. They have more than 250 agents. You don't get that big. You don't grow that large without knowing exactly what you're doing and helping your customers. So do yourself a favor, whether you're buying a home or selling one, go to Hometown Realty. It's myhdr.com. Whether you're closing on that home, whether you have a traffic issue, uh, maybe there's a family law issue. I, I, heck, maybe the ACC needs to check in with Josh Whitaker, Joe Hamer, because they have all kinds of legal issues going on. Whitaker and Hamer, it's wh.lawyer. Check them out because they can help you out with all of your legal needs. And again, I mentioned we will be at Shady's for our birthday in downtown Garner. That's uh, Josh's bar in downtown Garner. We're going to have some food trucks out there as well. Uh, can't thank Josh enough for supporting the program in the way that he has. Looking forward to having our birthday out there on Friday, May 3rd. I hope everyone will join us. And in the interim, I hope if you do have any legal needs, you reach out to Josh and Joe. Again, that is wh.lawyer. Easter Automotive Group Hotline. I don't know if you know this, Scott Wood, Ross Martin. You can sell your car to the Easter Automotive Group as well. So check them out, heisterauto.com. You can always buy one, but you can always also sell yours. Things I've learned this year. Ross Martin, uh, East Car Inside Carolina Emeritus, or, or will you be back? I'm currently in an editorial role with 247 Sports, 24-7 okay. Sports. So I'm, I'm on the national... I'm on the national desk, guiding content, you know, constructing the 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 national content that we put out. So okay. I'm still so involved. He's the reason so we're, we're so mad today. Ross, Ross is part of the problem. No, Ross is a uh, you know what you are. You're a Tar Heel influencer. So let's talk about the Tar Heels. They advance to Los Angeles in the West Region, where they will face Alabama. the The Caleb Love game is is on the horizon, and I want to talk about Caleb Love, and I want to talk a little bit about Alabama. But first. What did you think of the way that Carolina was able to withstand a slow start and then really just kind of put the hammer down on Michigan State in Charlotte in the second round? Yeah, it's kind of been like they've done all year. They've take punches. They've they've found a way to win. And I thought Michigan State looked great. And they came out and they punched UNC in the face a couple times. They were nailing threes. They were more physical. And then the, the big thing is that like interview that Hubert had during the timeout and he was fired up and he challenged his team uh, during that timeout and they came out, they, they got more relaxed and calm, went back to what they do well. And I think the play of Seth Trimble and Jalen Withers, um, you know, a little Jalen Washington, a little Paxton Wojcik, they came in and they gave them a spark they needed and then things started clicking. I thought Baycott had one of his best games um, in terms of his defense and, and scoring and being aggressive and, and drawing fouls. And then the shots started falling. I mean, Ingram hit threes. 
Uh, Cormac saw a couple go down, and then RJ kind of did his thing he's done all year. And I think it was a perfect representation of kind of what this UNC team can be. You've got to get contributions from everyone. It can't just be RJ and Armando. It's got to be Cormac hitting at least two threes and maybe a layup here and there. It's got to be Harrison Ingram hitting a couple threes and being that confident rebounder, that defender, that spark plug. I thought when all four of those guys are on, and then you get a contribution from Trimble um, and Withers, who I think have been great. And I think those two guys, if they can kind of play at that level, it's going to be a hard out for any team. But um, it was a complete team win, and it was way too much for Michigan State and the Tar Heels roll. And it's exciting, man. It's exciting for UNC fans. I know it's it's exciting all across the triangle. I'm pumped for MC State and Duke, and, and UNC is just is back in the Sweet 16 as well. Um, but I'm really loving the way that Trimble's playing and then the way that the whole team as a, as a, as a team is, is playing. After last year being preseason number one, missing the NCAA tournament, I know what Carolina's standard is, but even if they don't win a game, game in LA, this is still a successful season for them, right? Yeah, there's two ways to look at it. I mean, obviously the, the regular season is a success, but you're the one seed. I mean, this is a one seed team. You expect as the one seed to get the final four. I think the whole season, the expectations for UNC was like, all right, we don't think this is a a national championship team. This is maybe a Final Four team, but Elite Eight, Sweet 16 is kind of the – is where this team has to get. They've gotten to Sweet 16. They win the next game, and then you, you kind of see how things happen. I, I think being the one seed, I mean, the you go, get to the Final Four. But the regular season, super success. You saw – I think it's a huge step for Hubert Davis. I think this was a massive season for him um, after what happened last year. He got the right parts. He got Elliot Cadeau to reclassify. He got Harrison Ingram and Cormac Ryan and Jalen Withers, who were great fits for what they needed. The parts worked this time. They didn't work last year. Um, and, and it clicked in the regular season. Now the NCAA term is a whole different thing. Um, but I think this is huge. I think fans have kind of come around to Hubert finally. I think the Final Four run in the first year, disappointment last year. But this was kind of his year where it was his team. He recruited most of these players, not all, um, but he really coached this team and put his team together. So the fans are coming around to him. It's huge for him. And to get where they are now, I mean, go out and try to win it. Let's um, I'll, uh, let's talk a little bit about Caleb Love, and, and let's skip ahead to what's waiting. Uh, Scott Wood, <laughs> one of your teammates your first year, where you played with Ryan Harrow. Let's just suppose in 2012 you ended up playing against Ryan Harrow in the sweet 16. What well, what would that have been like? Can you can you imagine what that might have been like playing against the former teammate who was supposed to be or in this case with Caleb Love was a large part of what Carolina's success was 2 years ago. Assuming we won a national championship together. <laughs> uh well they didn't win the national championship together. They got to the they got to the final four together. Well, it has gone on deep runs yeah. and, and they were there together. Uh it'd be different. I, I think also you add in, you know, some of the sideshow that has happened and they've been in the media together, you know, it, it's going to be weird. Uh, but I also can tell you as a person that has played against, you know, more professionally former teams, you want to go at them with everything you have. Um, and I can guarantee you it can go two ways. It can be too much pressure to where he just feels like, you know, Caleb Love has to do everything. And then it, there can be the other way where all of a sudden he just comes out smoking because he just wants to absolutely punch him in the face. Uh, so it's it's going to be interesting. They both got to get through uh, a game first and foremost to, to be able to yeah. meet. But I can guarantee you that it, it's going to be an all out brawl and there's going to be, you know, it, it looks, you know, rainbows and butterflies <laughs> on the surface. But I can promise you deep inside there is yeah. certain people hurting and they're gonna they're they're gonna they're looking for each other. Yeah, Ross, give me a vibe check for Carolina fans yeah. on Caleb Love because he comes back at the beginning of the year with Arizona, puts Tar Heel for life on his shoes. He he wins another game at Cameron, and it was all love for Caleb Love. All of the sins of of twenty three were forgiven. Uh, what, what's the vibe check now? Do you think from UNC fans for Caleb Love and uh and and for that potential Elite Eight showdown? Well, my big question is, who feels the most pressure in that game? Is it Caleb Love or is it UNC? And, like, from a 
that's just kind of an interesting psychological thing. Who who is feeling the more pressure to win? Like what win means more? I think that's an important like kind of conversation to be had if both teams get to this point. That's a, that's a big if. I mean, UNC fans. I mean, from my perspective, having covered him and 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 you know being a UNC alum, like I want all the success possible for Carol. But I think it's awesome how it worked out for both. I think most fans feel that way. Like, why not? Yeah, he was the player of the year in the Pac-12, and then RJ. Yeah. Well, you know, kind of with his role opened up, becomes the player of the year in the ACC. So, so far, it's, it's been the best of both I worlds. Mean, both have thrived. Both have been excellent and had better seasons they ever had together. And it's not like Caleb Love was some scrub or some idiot at UNC. It's not like he was some awful person. He took, led UNC to massive wins at Duke, against Duke, in the final, or to the Final Four in that NCAA tournament. He put the team on his back. I mean, he's a Tar Heel um, through and through, and I think the university and fans owe him a lot for what he did. Now, the drama that went down that caused the riff, I mean, who knows what really happened? I'm not sure. going to speculate, but yeah. obviously it didn't work last season, and they had to part for both teams, both parties to be successful. Um, so, of course, I don't, I don't think UNC fans want to see him. I just don't think you want to see that scenario. I think Caleb probably wants to see UNC. Right. He wants to stick it to them. He wants, you know, this, this team kind of cast me away. They've had a great season. I want to prove that I'm the alpha, the, the, the guy that, that can beat them. So I think Caleb probably wants to see them and, and stick it to them. I'm not sure UNC or Huber, the staff, wants to see Arizona. Now, if they do, it's going to be wild because every UNC fan knows how Caleb Love plays. I mean, he is a he has an ultimate green light. He jacks up threes. He'll go you know, six for 18 or, 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 you know, seven for 21. Like he does not, he's never uh, turned down a three. So it'll be interesting to see who they put on him. Um, you know, how that is just, it's crazy, man. We, he was a starter at UNC for three years and, and now they're going against him. It's wild, but we got, you know, there's a game, two more games we played before that even happened. Nah, so, yeah, it, it was written in the stars, man. We're getting it. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, on the other side, I'm curious because Theo Pinson recently made News, at least on this podcast, in professing his hate for NC State, calling NC State motherfuckers, which to me is the ultimate compliment. Um, if NC State and Duke each win a basketball game in Dallas and NC State and Duke meet in the final eight, Ross Martin, Tar Heel influencer, who do you think the majority of Carolina fans would be rooting for in that game? Not rooting against, mind you, but rooting for if Duke and NC State were to meet with a trip to the Final Four on the line? I I would be rooting for NC State. And okay. I don't speak for all UNC fans. I don't... You're a bit younger, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I graduated in 08. Um, sorry. Yeah, 08. And I don't... This is when the fandom comes out, all right? Forgive me. I just don't want to see Duke get to another Final Four. I don't want to see Duke win a championship. Like, I don't like them putting up more banners. Like I've always, I always get scared when Duke has a chance and a really good team to like, God, they're gonna get another title. Like Coach K is gonna get another title. Um, and honestly, like this may not be what most Carolina fans think. I'm happy for UNC. Like I got tons of you. Uh, sorry, I'm happy for NC State. Freudian slip there. I I have tons of NC State friends. I'm on a group chat. Shout out the Peanuts. They are diehard yeah. NC State fans. It's like sorry, it's like eight or nine. Room. It's a peanuts group chat. It's diehard NC State fans. You said peanuts. There was a T in there. Yeah. The, the, first, the first one. I'm yeah, seeing. not not the not the penis group chat. The peanuts group chat. Um, yeah, I mean, like RG4. Um, yeah, yeah. And so, like, it is cool to see the success. I'm, I, it's it, it is exciting to see their excitement and fun and like celebrating. Like, look, I don't, I don't really want to them to get a chance i don't know it'd be cool to see them get the final four and be wild like i'm excited for them but i don't think that's the majority of unc fans but it is cool to see two triangle three triangle teams get there um it, you know this is a rare air for nc state to get this far and to see the joy um of a lot of people and see the excitement and get on twitter and mix it up and and see it's all obviously great for the og the great for the show right like it's it's cool um now nice i had I had a wild thought. What if UNC meets state in the championship game? Like those things, you start you start thinking that way. It would. I'm not sure it would ever happen, but like that would be crazy. You never thought UNC was going to face Duke in the Final Four, and that yeah. happened. 
But um, I mean, I think I think State's playing great, and um, I would I would definitely be rooting for State over Duke. I think I think UNC fans would would like that. My rival with NC, NC State is football. Like okay. I want UNC fans hate NC State in football. Like that's the rivalry. That's the one where like it's pretty even. Um, no offense. I mean, like in basketball, yeah. it's just not an even rivalry. It's not an even rivalry. But I think the, the rivalry in football is is a great one, and that's where. That I'd rather beat as a fan. I'd rather beat you in NC State in football than beat Duke in basketball. Truly, the big dog, Ross Martin, is your is your gap year in Michigan almost closed? You'll, you'll be back in the triangle <laughs> soon, I hope. Yeah, we'll be back. I mean, I, I could break the news here. Yeah, moving back to North Carolina in uh, August, September. So I'll be back, okay. back in. That was always the plan. I didn't. I haven't been very vocal about what this whole year was and and while we're moving back and everything. But it was always the plan to be back after a year. Okay. So excited maybe to there, get back in the fray. Maybe there's a home on NOG Media for a for a Ross Carolina podcast. There we go. The back channels are, are the back channels will be hot this summer. All right, we'll we'll work on that. Ross, appreciate you, man. We'll check in again with you to see how this happens because of course we still need to see some of these games happen before we but I'm glad we were able to have the conversation that we were. We'll talk soon. All right, appreciate it. Nice to meet you, Scott. Was over at PNC Arena yesterday for the Canes win over the Leafs. The Canes are, are smoking hot right now. Uh, won nine of their last 11 have points in seven straight games. Unbelievable. I did notice, though, there was an ad for two Roosters because they're there at PNC Arena. And what a great way to cool down as the Canes heat up and the weather heats up. You can check out two Roosters, all of their locations. They're uh, over off a person here near downtown. They're also off of lead mine. And then, of course, they're in the OG epicenter over on Lake Boone Trail. If you haven't been, uh, the best thing to do, seriously, when you're at a game, go get a flavor. My personal favorite flavor of choice is the bourbon coffee, but they have all kinds of different varieties. They do not miss when it comes to their different flavors. Unbelievable stuff. Big thanks to Jared for bringing over the ice cream for that OG live show last week over at Longleaf Swine. So do yourself a favor. Go check them out. And I've had so many people come up to me and be like, yeah, the pizza, the wings, the butcher's market, you guys, you, you don't miss when it comes to food. And I think you'll find out that we're right when it comes to ice cream as well. So check them out. Two Roosters, five locations here in the Triangle. Speaking of the OG epicenter over at Lake Boone Trail, the butcher's market, their newest location, right there off of Lake Boone. Yes, there's a little bit of construction in that parking lot, but if you just pull in, you'll see all of the delicious goodness that is the Butcher's Market. Whether it's prepared meals, which Joe Ovius loves the most, whether it's my recovery drinks, just in case you've been drinking a little bit too much during March Madness here, or whether you just want to get an old-fashioned steak or chicken breast and cook out yourself, best thing to do is go check them out. Butcher's Market. You, can't, you cannot go wrong. I mean, just pick a selection, any selection. You cannot go wrong. Check them out. It's thebutchersmarkets.com. Hopefully everyone has been enjoying the betting on the NCAA tournament, man. It ain't, it, Wolfpack came for soft people and gambling ain't for soft people, but we have partnered with DraftKings. And I, I think a lot of people have downloaded, you know, most of the apps trying to take advantage uh, of free money. Truth of the matter is you'll find the same thing that I found all those months ago. DraftKings is the best app. They have the best odds. They have the best interface. It's the easiest to use. So go check them out. It's DraftKings.com. I've got a couple plays for you. I got two, actually, since Jovius is not here. Um, I, I want to put a futures bet down on Tennessee to win the West region. Uh, working under the premise that everything is coming up Wolfpack, which it's hard to dispute right now. Justin Ganey is the top assistant at Tennessee. Rick Barnes has yet to lead the Volunteers to the Final Four. I think that they are the team to do it. Uh, obviously, a difficult matchup. They have Creighton in the Sweet 16, and then potentially would have to get through Purdue. 
I like Tennessee. I like their odds. It's plus 230 to win the region. So still a good number for a, uh, I know it's an SEC team. I know the SEC hasn't been great in this tournament, uh, but I do think Tennessee is the best of that bunch. And I do think Dalton connect is the difference. He is a bucket getter. Tennessee can play in the half court. Give me Tennessee plus 230 to win the West. And of course, since everything is coming up, Wolfpack, NC State plays Tennessee today, speaking of Tennessee, in the NCAA Women's Tournament. This game is over at Reynolds. Uh, if you're new to gambling, there's different, but you you probably started learning. There's all kinds of different ways to bet games. There's all kinds of different props to take. For this game, I like State halftime, full-time. Uh, so give me Wes, Moore, and, and the crew. Halftime, full-time. This means you, the point spread doesn't matter. NC State just needs to be ahead at the half and then win the game. The point spread does not matter. That means the odds or the juice is higher, but I think in this particular instance, the juice is worth the squeeze. State is minus 145. That means you have to bet $145 to win 100. I think it's worth it. Halftime, full-time, the NC State women today against Tennessee. And now, since Joe Ovius is out, that means Joe Giglio, not radio veteran, needs to read the ad Let's see how I can do this. Let's see if I can make it work. You ready? The wait is over. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of NASCAR, is now live in North Carolina. Now you can legally bet on all of your favorite sports anytime, anywhere, right here in North Carolina with DraftKings. For a limited time, new customers can sign up with the promo code OG24 and bet $5. They will receive $250 instantly in bonus bets. DraftKings has the best features, including same-game parlays, player props, and more with fast and easy payouts right at your fingertips. Download the DraftKings Sports app now using the code OG24, and you can bet $5 to get $250 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the code OG24. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543. Or visit more than a game.nc.gov. 21 plus North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and is used under license. All right, let's talk specifically about the Wolfpack and what's different in these seven games, Scott. Because now NC State, since the start of the ACC tournament, they're 7-0. Five wins in D.C., two wins in Pittsburgh. The previous seven games, they went 2-5. and five. I mean, for the most part, it's the same players, right? It's the same coach, and the games in D.C. were against the same teams, even. So... In your eye as a former player, as someone who had the success that you did and NC State, what do you see as the, the primary difference between the team that finished the regular season two and five and now the team that is seven and zero oh since the start of the ACC tournament? Uh, I think the first one is just them being confident. You have other guys stepping up, making shots. Everybody has taken their role to another level and they're rolling. They believe in themselves. First and foremost, they believe in their teammates and those type of teams that get going like that are the dangerous ones, especially this time of year. I could be reading into this and this is from the post game um, after the win over Oakland. And I'll play the clip here for those watching on YouTube. You can see uh, NC State's at the podium. They bring the players up with Kevin Keats. If you're unfamiliar with the format, Coach gives an opening statement, and then questions are asked to the players. It, it can be a little bit cumbersome and clunky because normally the conversations you like to have as a media person, you want to go back to the locker room and kind of get them one-on-one -on -one a little bit. But for the most part now, we're, we're kind of confined to these press conference situations. But I thought this was interesting. This is from uh, the post game from the Oakland game. And I, I have the question here as well, but it's basically like, the specifically what uh, it's it's a question based on 
for the people who didn't believe in you, what do you have to say? So here's here's the question and, and the answer, starting with DJ Burns. You to be in this position. So what's your message to those people who didn't expect to see NC State make it to the Sweet 16? DJ, you want to start and work your way down? Uh, well, I, I've be been nice. saying it. Be yeah. nice. I've been saying it, you know, welcome back. You know, they didn't really believe in us. And, you know, they probably still don't. But that doesn't matter to us. We're just going to stay together. Um, if you're supporting us, thank you. If not, that's what it is. All right. So <laughs> you hear Kevin Keats there saying, be nice. Scott, you and I did a podcast after the NC State lost to Duke in the regular season finale. And I questioned you, but you said nine. you thought 90% of the fan base was mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. out on Kevin Keats. Mm -hmm. And I even questioned you because you had played for Sidney Lowe and at the end of his era, his tenure, I asked you as a player, like, what were you paying attention to? What weren't you paying attention to? That answer kind of feels like, and, and some other answers from, from Washington, that answer to me feels like the NC State players were, were paying attention. Obviously, it's different now with social media and everything going on. Yeah. That, that that did not sound like warm and fuzzies. <laughs> that felt like I think it's motivating them. The the doubt that not only national types had or even us, but like the own their own fans. Yeah, that's what that sounded like to me. Maybe I'm maybe I'm reading reading a little bit too into it, but I feel like they're playing with a chip on their shoulder. That well, that helps. And if if you find uh, the clip at the end of the ACC championship, they were talking to him on the podium. He said the same thing. Yeah, he said everybody that's supported us and continued to support us we appreciate you and the other ones that are going to hop back on the bandwagon i guess welcome back right i mean he was he's very clear about it and the funny thing is so we're actually yeah we're, we're the dumb ones we're going to drive to dallas mm -hmm. and my parents are here on spring break and the kids so my wife got the wild hair she went back and tried to find some like comments and like media stuff from when we played in the sweet 16 all those years ago and she found a quote from uh, Richard Howe, and it was almost word for word <laughs> the same. identical that DJ Burns has said. And I don't, listen, I, I don't very, uh, well, actually, I probably do. I don't get critical of our fan base very often, but they are so negative. As soon as one thing goes bad, it's just like, oh, the world is burning. We can't do anything. Kevin Keats runs no offense. Listen, if you watched March Madness last night in those two games, Alabama, uh, Grand Canyon, uh, Texas A&M and Houston. A&M and Houston, they didn't run one set. Like I've I've been watching the social media and it just it literally looks like we're out on the blacktop and it's just like hey man I'm gonna go ISO ball and if I get a rebound I'm taking it down the court. So we want to badmouth the national media. Let's go back to our own fan base. You want to <laughs> say Kevin Keats doesn't run anything? Right. Watch the rest of college basketball and tell me that. So I think it's just gotten to the point where look, you support your team no matter what. If you're gonna be, it, it's hard to be an NC yeah. State fan. Yeah. I've, I've learned that now. That this I'm, makes it easier winning this. Breaking the ACC title drought, but, which had gone back in football to 79, basketball to 87, makes it a little bit easier, for sure. But it's also proof that if you just, you know, support, 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 good things can happen. You know, a long drought, yes. 37 years is a long time. Perhaps when you, you know, expect the least, you do get the most. Um, fundamentally, to me, I, you know, I think you say they've been running some different stuff. In, the, in this seven game structure, doing some different things, different ideas to get DJ the ball in the post. This comes down to two things. The one that you don't expect, uh, which is Michael O'Connell. He averaged 3.8 points per game in the previous seven games. He's averaging 11.1. I mean, that that's number one. You're, you're, yeah. That's totally, and it's not at the expense of anybody. It's, it's, an, it's, an, it's an addition. You know what I mean? And I think partially probably the injury to 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 Jaden Taylor. So some of those minutes are going to Michael and mm -hmm. Michael's getting in a better flow. Uh I think is is another piece. But but like but you Jayden said, hit a huge three at the end of the Oakland game. Played. They don't win in overtime without his three. So that they've all kind of helped. But I think also the other part of this goes to DJ Burns. Yeah. DJ Burns down the stretch, he had a game where he didn't score. He was averaging 12 points a game. Yeah. In the last seven games of the year. And it he was kind of in it, man. He was going through it. It's what NC and, State's done. And now it's up to 16 and a half. 
So he's been a force. He's been a difference maker. He's been a driver. Yeah. Which you and I talked about at the beginning of the year. He has to be the bucket getter. He has to be the drought stopper. And that could be difficult from that position. Yeah. But he's found a way. And it's what NC State's done, but I also think it's partially what some of these other teams have done. So you get Oakland who plays, you know, that modified matchup one, three, one. They've got basically three guys shading them. Yeah. So then it gives guys more room. Then you go all the way back. A lot of teams have not double teamed them. So they're giving him the opportunity to play one-on-one, uh, which is honestly surprising to me. So it's, it's given him more opportunity. So I think it's partially what NC State has done. I do think they're moving him around a little bit more. So then other people are getting some DHOs, uh, some side pick and rolls so that they're able to attack and get a feel for the ball. But also, you got to get the ball out of his hands, I think. And, and who you're going to trap on, I don't know. You know, that's for another coach to figure out. But I do think it's also what other teams are doing. They got to take away one of the two. You got to take away DJ Horn, which I felt like, especially the second half, Oakland did a good job of. I think State could have moved him around a little more to get him more involved. But there's also the DJ Burn show when they needed it. On the surface, I, I look at Marquette and I don't see a lot of size. I don't see someone who in particular can guard DJ Burns. What do you, and that doesn't mean State wins the game. I just think it's in their favor that during this run, State has played a specific way. And for the most part, they've they've been out in front. They've been in control. They've been on schedule. I, I do think if Marquette were to start hot and Kolick is banging a couple threes and some of those other guys starting a couple threes and you're in a chaser mode, you're going to be in trouble. But I think it sets up. I think Marquette sets up for them as a matchup that they can actually do the things that they've been doing and win the basketball game. Yeah, and I, you know, I even sat there last night when you mentioned something in a group. I don't. I don't know if there's any team right now that necessarily scares NC State. Now, any team can get hot. I mean, there's one UConn. I mean, it's <laughs> UConn's a monster. UConn, I mean, let's just obvious. be honest. I mean, they've got seven footers. They yeah. got guys that can go. But we'll worry about them on the other. Yeah, 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 they're yeah, on yeah. the other side of bracket. <laughs> they got. They got a chance hey, to trip over their and, own feet. And that's part of bracket luck, yes. right? Like it. If you're sitting here, if you're NC State and you're going to Houston and UConn's waiting for you, you're in trouble. Yeah. But you you now give some other teams a chance for UConn to stumble, and you give yourself a chance against some of these other teams who you should go into again having that mindset of all we have to do is play the way that we've been playing. Yeah. We don't need a miracle. We don't need Scott Wood to hit to hit eight threes and carry us through this storm. We just need to play the way that we've been playing. So I, I think that gives State hope. And it'll be it'll be an interesting matchup. I think, you know, my question with Oakland was, okay, where where's DJ going to guard? I think, obviously, they found a good spot for him there. He didn't have to guard, uh, I think it was Townsend, uh, much, which I was I thought that if what Oakland should have done was gone a little bit smaller and force Townsend to play the five, which they didn't. They kind of just let him at the four, and then Diara and Middlebrooks were able to guard him and give DJ a, a better matchup. Uh, but again, Who's he going to guard first and foremost? But, you know, they got to guard us too, pal. Who is that? Who is Marquette going to put on there? And I think Marquette's going to probably be the first team that's going to send that double team and DJ's going to have to make the right plays and other guys are going to have to make sure. You know, it warms my heart to see the breeze through freeze crew at the Canes games in the intermission. You know, they, they have lucky customers come out, ride the Olympia machine. We gave away some tickets at the live show last Thursday. Breeze through is the best. 17 locations in the state of North Carolina. Coffee, tailgate needs, adult beverages, rehydrating beverages, snacks, you name it. They have it. Uh, unbelievable hats. I, I've seen a couple of the different hats uh, all through downtown. People will say to me, hey, man, I got my gas station beers hat at the Breeze Through. Check them out, breezethrough.com, or find one nearest to you, home base there, of course, right behind PNC Arena. Canes are about to heat up. Playoffs are about to heat up. And the Dark Roast Coffee will always be there to deliver. So big thanks to Adam and his crew over at Breeze Through. We, we can't do what we do uh, without them supporting us in the way that they did. And uh, I hope you guys can support them for, for taking care of us the way that they have here as we get ready to celebrate our year together on the OG Media. Speaking of swag and having the best stuff, man, if you guys haven't figured it out yet, that Home Field Apparel has the best merch. 
whether it's throwback, whether it's new, whether they're hoodies, whether they're shirts, they have it. Jackets, they have it. Go to homefieldapparel.com. Use our promo code, which is OG23, and you can save 15% on your first purchase. Their, their Carolina stuff, I'm not going to lie to you, it's, it's the best stuff that they have. Hands down, man. I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're Carol, Carolina fans over there, but they have great Carolina merch, uh, state, Duke, you name it, they have it all. So go check them out, homefieldapparel.com. Again, use that promo code OG23, and you can save 15% on your initial purchase. And there's only one OG, OG, speaking of year celebrations and birthdays coming up, man, we cannot have, there, there. we would be nothing without Hayes Lancaster, Mosquito Authority, Pest Authority. Noticed a little uptick in the weather. Notice a little uptick in ants. Best thing to do, reach out. Mosquito Authority, Pest Authority, go to bugsbite.com. That's bugsbite.com. Hayes Lancaster is the OG, OG. He does not believe in contracts, but he does believe in saving you money. So punch in your zip code at bugsbite.com. Find the best packages to protect your house from critters and bugs outside. Maybe there's mice in the attic, moisture under the house. You might hear me say moisture under the house and be like, what are you talking about, Jaleo? Trust me. You, If you're in a position where you're going to hometown reality or you need Whitaker and Hamer and, and you're in the buying or selling phase, you got to make sure you don't have any mold or mildew issues and moisture issues. The best thing to do is check them out. It's bugsbite.com. All right, let's get out of here on some Hey Joe questions. And yes, hearing that piano makes me think, hey, it's Permar. We need to hit you up, man. Let's get an official OG jingle for these Hey Joe questions. And since Obvious is not here today, and I'm not going to make up the Hey Joe comments or questions like I used to in another lifetime. However, let's go old school. Let's go to the Twitters uh, when Duke was absolutely hammer jobbing James Madison yesterday. I was actually uh, over at the Canes game covering the Canes for AP. And I saw the first half score and I was like, whoa, what is happening right now? And I just tweeted, hey, man, I'm over here at the Canes, but I see you, Duke props, to which our friend Noah, hashtag Noah JD, really excited to see the 37 seconds dedicated to talking about them, which will be mostly you trashing them. Signed, a salty Duke fan. Oh, come on, Noah, 37 seconds. No, I mean, obviously this year, and I've been pretty consistent about this. I think Duke's going to be very good next year. I think we're going to talk a lot about Duke next year. Uh, but as I mentioned uh, earlier in today in the podcast, what an unbelievable basement to have. Think about it. NC State's celebrating getting to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2015. Duke regularly makes the Sweet 16. This is a down year for Duke. And still, they're in the Sweet 16 and with a chance to make the Final Four. We will see what happens in Dallas. They have to take on a really tough Houston team. But if Jared McCain's going to shoot the way that he did against James Madison, well, I got news for you. Um, Duke's going to hang around. Now, I, I thought that was actually like a nice comment. Not not so nice, though, from Mike Drop with a with a number here. We don't want your petty props greasehead. Oh, Mike. Why does it have to be about my hair or potentially my heritage? Greasehead. Mm, it's not nice. That That's a that's an excellent way to know for you to encourage me to talk about your team in a positive way. As I talked about with Jim Phillips, sometimes you just, you, as my mom likes to tell me, you can attract more flies with honey than with vinegar. And finally, finally, uh, if you missed it, Michael Cooper from the assembly wrote about our adventures here as independent, uh, as an independent media company. And I'll pull up his tweet. I'll put a link in the, uh, YouTube section as well for you guys to read it. Um, his tweet was, former radio host Joe Obvious and Joe Giglio are reinventing themselves as podcasters at a fraught time for both media and sports. This is over at the Assembly. And I, I thought this was the one that would warm Joe Obvious' heart because he talks about this often. Uh, this is from Stella Nation on the Twitters. Love the article. Knew there were some changes, but hadn't understood the whole story. Must have missed it last year. So... If you did miss it and you're trying to figure out what happened to those guys, well, 
like I said, you can catch it in this article. I thought Michael did a, a good job and a fair job and appreciate him uh, catching some people up on what we've been up to. That's going to do it for today. Joe Obvious will be out tomorrow and Wednesday. I will try again to hold down the fort and get this thing up in a timely fashion. We'll see how it goes. We'll talk some more about the Canes. We'll talk some more, obviously, about our teams in the Sweet 16. And we will catch up tomorrow right here on the OG.